Welcome to the third Sunday in Easter for 2019. Our readings for today include Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 22, uh, Re Revelations chapter 5, verses 1 through 14, John uh, 21, verses 1 through 14. And uh, you could read the rest of the chapter, John 21 also. Our uh, hymns that we'll sing today include Feed Thy Children, God Most Holy, With High Delight, Let Us Unite, uh, With Songs of Joy to Christ Our Head. And the children's song for this morning, Allelu, 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 Alleluia, Praise ye the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As I uh, had said last week, uh, we'll be skipping through the book of Revelation during the Easter season. So, so last week we read and talked about the uh, chapter 1, and this week we're in chapter 5, where we find ourselves in the throne room of heaven, or, uh, or at least around the throne, if there is a room. Uh, but the scene started in chapter 4, and John was uh, entered into this place, was brought up by the Spirit through a door in, into heaven, and, um, and he sees this marvelous scene of God the Father, the Creator, seated on the throne, surrounded by precious stones and rainbows, which are his glory, shining out in all this splendor. It's just, uh, just amazing. And then, and then he sees the 24 elders, which represent the 12 uh, tribes of the Old Testament and the 12 apostles of the New Testament together, which is kind of a... Uh, an interesting thing when he's one of the twelve apostles, but uh, they represent them. He's seen, you know, Reve Revelation is this vision from of the beginning of the world to the end of the world. So, um, the twelve uh, apostles and twelve tribes, twenty-four elders, uh, are the whole council of God, and then the four strange creatures, uh, which are also uh, similar, mentioned in the vision of heaven in Isaiah 6 and, and in, by Ezekiel, uh, moving around the throne with these strange faces of lions and oxen and men and eagles and their wings outstretched. So there's a, a lot of speculation about what these represent, but we can see that in every vision they are close to God, the Creator. They surround Him in the throne on every side and they move uh, with him wherever he goes. And John also sees a glassy sea. Now the sea uh, symbolizes our sin and separation from God, but it's not a rough and chaotic as the sea often is. Uh, this, this sea is peaceful, glassy, because Jesus had made, has made peace between God and men. Uh, so while we are still separated by God, um, by our sin, we also have peace with him. Uh, as, and as Jesus calmed the sea, the storm at the sea, when he was with the disciples, so this sea is calm and glassy. And uh, then all of these elders and creatures begin to sing and worship God the Creator. Again, with the same song that we heard in Isaiah. Uh, holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Uh, these Powerful and strange words that we heard in chapter 1, we talked about last week. Who is, was, and is, and is to come. The great I am. Uh, and they continue, Worthy are you, O Lord, our, and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were creator, created. Being the creator is an important part of who God is. Then we arrive at chapter 5, and uh, starting at verse 1, where there is a scroll. Uh, we find a scroll in the right hand of God the Father. I, Ezekiel also saw a scroll, and God made him eat it. Uh, this scroll contains God's plan of salvation. The plan is kept safe by seven seals, and no one is able to open it. No one in heaven or on earth is worthy. And so John begins to weep loudly in sadness, that in, uh, um, in grief that it wouldn't be opened. But then one of the elders told him to stop weeping. The Lion of Judah, 
The root of David has conquered, and so he can open the scrolls and its seven seals. Uh, some people speculate that the tomb had seven seals on the stone, and uh, Roman, uh, Roman people would seal a last will and testament with seven seals, wax seals. Uh, Jesus has won the victory, and he can open it. And now the, the Lion of Judah appears as a lamb who was slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. This all sounds a bit fantastic, right? Hard to imagine. Never seen a, a sheep with seven horns and seven eyes. Don't, but don't picture a mutant sheep. Uh, but Jesus is the Lamb of God who is all powerful. The horns represent power. Uh, and he can see everything perfectly by the help of the spirits of God. He is omnipotent, all again all powerful, and omniscient, all knowing. In Isaiah it says that in the new creation the lion will lie down with the lamb. <laughs> well in this chapter, in these short verses here, the lion is the lamb. They're the same person. Jesus lies down with himself. Or you know, uh, the lion and the lamb are combined. Maybe that's what God was trying to say through Isaiah. He's the, in the new creation, the first fruits risen from the dead. He knows the Father's plan of salvation. He brings it uh, to us, makes it known to us. When he takes the scroll, the seven elders and creatures all fall down and worship him, just as they had worshipped God the Father, the Creator, again, reminding us that Jesus is very God, a very God of the same substance with the Father. And they have harps representing the music, uh, and uh, incense uh, represents the prayers of God's people rising up to him. In worship we sing and we pray, and now they worship Jesus with a new song, uh, in, uh, one that is not uh, quoted directly from anywhere in the Old Testament. It's a song that is now part of our liturgy. Uh, this is the feast. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Uh, we will hear more of this hymn next week in chapter 7. But uh, a reminder that our worship here is the same as the worship in heaven. We are lifted up when we gather in his name and we, we sing the songs and the words that God gives to us. We're preparing ourselves. Uh, he has made us a kingdom of his people. He is our king and we are the priests. Uh, we point the unbelieving world to Christ and to God's salvation and we pray and intercede for them. Uh, we heard this mentioned last week in chapter 1, that uh, we are a kingdom priests to our God. And finally, all the heavenly hosts in all creation join in the hymn of praise also, just as in chapter 4, where they gave glory and honor and power to God, the Father, Creator. Now all, the same words are sung to the Lamb, to the Son of God, who He has earned uh, but he has also earned wealth and wisdom and might and blessing through his life, suffering and death on the earth. He shares his wealth, wisdom, might and blessings with us, his people. And every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, uh, all that is in them, they all are singing. Uh, it's just like a Disney movie, right? Maybe Fantasia. You imagine the, the fish and, and the, all, the, every, all the creatures singing. Uh, and we're going to be part of it too. This is, and this is the, the coronation of Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It started with the, the parade on Palm Sunday. And then he went through the test of his passion. Would he go through the suffering and death? And then he won the victory with his resurrection. Uh, he has earned all honor and glory and power and might. Uh, he didn't uh, fully take the throne until after his ascension he returned to heaven and John is given a vision of Jesus' coronation on ascension day uh, which uh, heaven is in a different time than we are so, so that he can do that um, 
When we gather to worship, and especially when we sing the liturgy, the words that God has given us, we are taking part in this day, and we are preparing for the day when we will be there in person. Not just in spirit, as John was in, in this book that he's writing down, but we will be there in our own flesh and blood. As Job said, even though we die, we will see God, our Redeemer, in our own flesh. We'll be uh, recreated with heaven and earth, reunited in body and soul, fully resurrected and ready to live for the rest of forever. Praise God! Though our sin has kept us separated from Him, uh, and still separates us from Him, because of Jesus we have peace with God now, and when sin is removed from us, we will no longer be separated from Him. You will be there. You will see all of this with your own eyes. So do not be afraid. Live fearlessly. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.